Um, again, er hi everyone. Um, as Stefan said, uh, I'm Don Stevens. I'm the president of Comtech Services and the director of the Center for Information Development Management, or CIDM, as it is uh, most uh, well known as. And it is my honor and my privilege to welcome you today too of Diddle World. Thank you, Stefan, for asking me to uh, to do so again. I hope that all of you found day one to be rich with information, and that um, day two will also be full of very intriguing stories. Now, as an opening address, it's my job to set the stage for the, to, the, for the day. And when I think of, of setting the stage, I think of stage productions like the musicals that are shown here on my title slide. And I am sure that today's presenters are awaiting to capture your attention with their biographies and their historical accounts and their you know, tales of adventure. Throughout the day, you'll probably laugh at the presenters' amusing anecdotes. You'll empathize and, and you'll maybe even shed a tear for their tales of woe. And certainly, they will, you will cheer for their victories that they share. Now, it probably won't be accompanied by an orchestra, and they probably will not periodically break into song and dance. But, you know, I mean, it's not Broadway. But I do assert that a conference, any conference like Diddle World, is a collection of stories. And isn't that what we as DITA practitioners um, really need to be more adept in building, right? And an effective story that will justify our use of DITA um, or sing its praises, show the results of what we have um, managed to do with it. And what better way for us to actually perfect and develop our own stories than to listen to those of others, their um, explanatory narratives, their cautionary tales, their inspirational epics, they all lead us to that oh, sometimes elusive happy ending. So I encourage you all, wherever you are, to uh, curl up on your sofa with a warm beverage, um, with your laptop, and, and prepare to be regaled with sagas of Dida today. Now, as a consultant, I've heard many Dida stories over the years, and I've told probably even more. Um, and for a long time, I've been joking with people who come to CIDM conferences that, oh, we should really put together a musical about Dida. We have a lot of um, hidden talent in the community, and, and in fact, um, at our recent event, Convex, that happened a couple of weeks ago, we actually had a talent show that um, people participated in, and, and we uncovered all sorts of previously unknown abilities, people that um, play instruments, that sing, that uh, compose their own songs, write their own poetry. So this longtime joke that I've had um, is maybe taking on a bit more pressure <laughs> to actually create some kind of an epic tale of, of Dida. Um, but to actually tell this story, we knew more than the you know, epitome of the, the beginning, the once upon a time, the, the first thing we have to do when we think about our story is to determine, well, what role is it that Dida is going to take in our story? And as I was thinking about that in the context of, of writing a musical, I thought that, you know, really, this is the same thought process that everybody has to take when you're telling the tale of Dida to your executives or to your, your colleagues. The um, perspective that we build by how we cast Dida ultimately changes the resulting story significantly. A perfect example of this, you may be familiar with uh, Gregory Maguire, who wrote the story Wicked. And that story, which of course has now become a big Broadway play, um, gives us a whole new perspective on the Wizard of Oz, when because he recast Elphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West, into the role of the protagonist, rather than into that role of a villain. And we got a whole different view um, of her and her story. So I thought for this opening address, it would be interesting to examine our possibilities and to have each of you ask, where are you going to position Dida in your specific narrative? So what are our options? Well, our first option is that of a protagonist. Is Dida the hero in your story? Right? In this view on a typical story, we're going to follow Dida from its introduction into the technical communication industry. We're going to see how it overcame for adversity and it overtook DocBook and other standards to become that treasured leader in XML standards. And we're gonna see how it rushes in with no thought to its own well-being to save the day for technical writers everywhere. 
technical writers who have cried, you know, we need a hero. We have longed for a standard that will free us from the ennui of repetitive cutting and pasting. And we need something to defend our values of consistency and efficiency. And so we may cast Ditta as our, our protagonist. But maybe protagonist, maybe the hero role is too big for Ditta. Um, a bit of an overstatement. And in our narrative, really, we want to focus the attention on us. The technical writer is actually the hero of our story. And, and Ditta, well, maybe Ditta fills the role of the beloved, but sometimes quirky sidekick. Now, as a sidekick, Ditta is absolutely cherished by our technical writing hero. And in fact, if you think about stories of heroes and their sidekicks, we know that nothing angers our hero more than threats or injury to our precious sidekick, to our precious pet. So throughout the story, our sidekick, though, can, can get the hero out of some very tricky jams. But sometimes they are also the cause of the problem in the first place. Nevertheless, our hero is always quick to forgive that little sidekick, insisting that the loyal sidekick is ever by his or her side. Was that the role of Ditta? Unfortunately, there are those out there, I don't know if anybody's attending here today, but there are those out there who would cast Ditta in the role of villain, a character that is plotting the demise of not only our hero, but everyone who dares to associate with that hero. In this story, Ditta is standing in contrast to all that we know to be good. It's threatening our well-defined processes, our proven styles, and our freedom and our creativity. It's throwing challenges and adversity at us, and it's putting us in chains in an attempt to keep us from our goal of technical writing perfection. It widens the chasm between ourselves and our needed SME allies. Now, in this story, Dida must not get past our defenses, and it must be defeated at all costs. Are you telling that story? Now, in some stories, Ditta is not a character at all. Um, it could be many things, such as here, the setting. It's just the setting where the action takes place. Now, when we think about a setting, readers of story typically give it very little thought. They're very focused on the hero and the characters. But the setting is imperative to the action. It sets the mood. It sets the, the ambiance. The, it influences, ultimately, how we feel as the story plays out. We think about different uh, settings. We think about how different we feel. Imagine a tale that takes place in a peaceful, flowery meadow on a summer day. In contrast to one that takes place in a sinister, foreboding castle in the dark of a cold and stormy night, right? we feel different. Now, in the setting role, Ditta sets the stage for the action and in many ways you know, determines how difficult our hero's quest may be. Ditta may place the writer in a friendly, intuitive environment where everything is easy, or potentially in one in which the writer is easily lost and unable to complete even the simplest of tasks. How do we, how do we stage Ditta if it is the setting? Now, Ditta, in some cases, especially those of you building business cases for why you should move there, Ditta's the quest. It's the goal. It's, it's the object of value that our hero is seeking. It is the reason for the adventure that the hero has set out on. It's fame. It's fortune. It's the love of the princess. It's the holy grail. It's whatever we set our sights on, what we fight for, and what we're going to give everything to achieve. Now, that quest is not necessarily easy. In fact, many have tried um, to achieve it, and some of them have failed. Uh, many others have, however, succeeded and are better for it. But for us to reach that holy grail of Dada, we beg and we plead and we borrow, knowing, knowing that our lives will not be complete without it. We will gather all of our forces, we will create our business cases, and we will fight our way to this goal, working to remove every obstacle in our path. Now, speaking of obstacle, in many stories, that's the role that Ditta takes on. It's the challenge that has to be met in our quest for user enlightenment. It might be something that's thrown at us by our villainous management, um, or it may be some 
just simply a, some kind of a mountain that has to be climbed or a river to be crossed as we continue on our path. And it is our wit, our strength, and our persistence that will allow us to overcome this obstacle, turning it into a tool and an ally. In fact, this is often the story within the story. As we look back on our journey and we see the obstacles we have overcome, Self-reflection in the face of these trials allows us to discover our inner qualities and to achieve things we never thought we could. Uh, and looking back after we've achieved our goals, we see where we've been, it allows us to see how much we've grown. So it can be an obstacle, but also a growth mechanism. But in some stories, <laughs> inner reflection and determine, not quite enough. The hero needs some kind of penultimate secret weapon, uh, the silver bullet, the magic spell, the enchanted potion, something that will solve all of the problems and help us to overcome those obstacles. Wielded with the right hands, the secret weapon helps our hero overcome obstacles, defeat the villain, and reach the goal. Now in this role, Dida is the means by which consistency is obtained, efficiencies are gained, users are satisfied. Faced with a documentation challenge, our technical writer just reaches into his or her bag of Dita tricks and pulls out a carefully crafted relationship table, or perhaps the all-powerful scoped key. Or perhaps really Dita is none of these things. It's simply the end of our story. When all is said and done, and our characters have followed their paths, overcome their obstacles, and succeeded in their quests, we rest assured that everything is right in the world. The villains are defeated, the rewards are obtained, and perhaps Dida is just simply that epilogue. It's the happily ever after, the brief glimpse into the future that assures us that our characters will be all right as they continue on their journey outside the pages of our story. Whatever your story, whether you're working on a new content strategy, adding functionality to your offerings, or seeking to improve your publication process, you do have a story to tell. The question for you to decide as you attend this conference is what role you can and should did a play in that story. That, de that decision is going to determine the entire direction, the tone, and the action of your tale. It's going to impact your audience that you will attract and it controls the emotions that they're going to feel. So I encourage you to aspire to be that best-selling author and craft your story well. Of course, if you need help creating your story, uh, Comtech can help, and so feel free to reach out to me through the contact information you see on the screen, and also post information in the chat afterwards. So I wish you a great day of storytelling, and it is now my pleasure to turn things over to Lonnie Stark, Senior Director of Strategy and Product Marketing at Adobe, who will capture your attention as she tells you the tale of transforming content for the chaotic world. <laughs> 